Welcome to the Woodpreneur Podcast, the number one podcast for the business and marketing side of the lumber, woodworking, hardwood flooring, and sawmill industry. I'm your host, Steve from Acres of Timber. Each week, we feature various wood business owners and entrepreneurs from around the globe. We share their stories, paths, insights, so that you can network, learn, and grow your own wood business. Thank you so much for listening. Now enjoy the episode. The Woodpreneur Podcast is proudly sponsored by Acres CRM. Acres CRM is the wood industry's only customer relationship management software dedicated to helping you automate your sales and marketing so that you can focus on serving your customers and growing your business. You can visit acresoftimber.com to learn more and to schedule a demo. Once again, that's acresoftimber.com. Hey, welcome to a brand new episode of the Woodpreneur Podcast. This is your host, Steve. Today's guest is Ron Durs uh, from Ronders Wood and Metalworks in Illinois. How are you doing, Ron? Good, good. It's good, uh, good, good to be here. Thanks for having me yeah. on. Yeah, I'm excited to have you on. I, I've followed your work for a while because uh, I have a, uh, have a fond uh, appreciation for chainsaw millers <laughs> <laughs> the the uh the badasses of the of the uh sawmill industry i like the chainsaw uh chainsaw millers just because i feel like it's a great you know it's a great accessible way to to um to get into the sawmill industry so why don't you tell Absolutely. everybody about your background like how did you how did you get into uh into the space and your business well, it all started with uh, being in the arts world all my life, you know, arts and building, you know, lots of family members, uh, uh, carpenters, uh, trade people, you name it. Uh, so I was always kind of in the industry and but I never really saw the, the tree industry, the arborist industry. Um, and then I got diagnosed with Crohn's and I got real sick and I kind of lost my way. Didn't really know where I was going to head, what kind of job I was going to do, skill, you know, whatever. And uh, then finally uh, found the, the trees. I, I started taking down trees in my own yard because it was just a point of time where trees were dead. We we're dealing with just looking at dead trees and garbage. So, uh, you know, started cutting that stuff down and realizing, hey, we could, we could do something more with this. Uh, and then I kind of just snowballed from there, kept going more and more with the uh, arborists and realized that here in Chicagoland, there's a, a crazy, crazy market for firewood and mulch. And that's the only thing the arborists in the area can afford to do because their overhead is so high, they can't spend time wasting, you know, what are we gonna do with these logs? They gotta chip it, they gotta dump that truck and they gotta get on the next job. So all of a sudden I realized that there's a, there's a little bit of a market for someone to come take those logs from these arborists. And that's when I kind of stopped doing all of the, uh, the chip work, you know, chipping the branches into a, a big grinder and started cutting my own lumber, just taking the logs from them. And it's snowballed now to the point where I have more logs than I have time to cut. <laughs> but you're, you're a, so you're first and foremost, you're a tree guy. Yeah. Cool. Yep. So you have your own tree business. So you work on a tree on a crew or, you know, I never got hardcore into my own crew and all of that. It was mainly just uh, side work, you know, side gigs, people need a tree cut down. I did it. And I was kind of running without uh, uh, hardcore insurance. And then I realized that they, you, you <laughs> need insurance to be doing this. So uh, yeah, we, we, we got yeah, out of you that. Get, you get, you get your math wrong or you don't sleep <laughs> yeah. too well. <laughs> yep. Yep. You don't want to be fuzzy headed when you're climbing. <laughs> you don't want to be fuzzy headed. All right. So that makes, you know what, that makes, that makes complete sense. You know, just the, the profile of the, you know, uh, like, I feel like tree people are, are the extreme athletes of the, of the wood industry, right? Like the ability yeah. to climb a tree and fell it and how, especially the close proximity to houses and power lines. And yeah. um, so that, that explains the, 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 the Alaskan mills uh, part of it. And so, so you had a background in um, you know, family background in woodworking, carpentry, that sort of stuff. You were doing tree stuff. And then at what moment did you, did things become like a business? Like, you know, I actually so saw that your, your, was, Etsy, your Etsy is 
like popping off. Like you sold a lot of stuff on Etsy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, Etsy has been going great for me. Um, there was a pivotal point there. I was in a weld shop for quite a while and it got to the point where I needed a higher income to pay the mm -hmm. bills and uh, the shop just wasn't cutting it. I wasn't able to really get a raise. And uh, I was making tables on the side, you know, just uh, furniture for, for fun. And um, I realized that there's more money in that than uh, what I'm doing in the day job. And it got to the point where the day job got in the way of the side hustle. And I realized, hey, it's time to finally just make the switch and we'll go full time. Were you, what made you commit to Etsy? Um, well, you know, I've been, I dabbled in Etsy since 2013. Okay. Um, so I had many, I mean, I had a decade there of, uh, you know, maybe, maybe $200 a year in, mm -hmm. you know, sales. Um, and then I, a really kind of crazy story. It was a, a designer from downtown there, you know, the Chicago bungalows that you, you walk from, from the backyard, bam, you're in the dining room kitchen, right? <laughs> there's no, there's no real, uh, no square room. footage for anything. Yeah. And this designer wanted a, a, just a bar top that uh, the client could shove, you know, three, four stools into and increase the dining area. And so she's like, what can you do? Something that can be mounted on the wall. And that's when I designed up the uh, turnbuckle brackets with, uh, you know, just a, a shelf on top. And I put that up on, you know, I, I did it for her. And it, it's kind of funny because it was like, you know, that job where it's low ball that you get done with it and she's like oh can i pay you less and uh okay so you know we almost didn't make money on that whole trip uh but then i put the listing on etsy and everyone across the world is uh paying a lot for square footage in their home so if they can put a table up on the wall and add you know 100 bucks worth of stools bam they have four more seats and that's almost invaluable to most people especially on the, the east coast west coast they're paying so yeah. much for the square footage. That's and we've cool. just kind of gone from there. You know, we do uh, custom versions and it's, it's uh, quite humbling how many places have these little uh, shelves in their establishment everywhere from businesses to apartments to you name it. Uh, people seem to be loving it. So you created your own little signature product. Yeah. That's yeah, so cool. We're, we're just trying to keep going as fast as we can until uh, somebody rips it off. <laughs> do you, do, is, is, and so, yeah, I was going to talk about your product, your product mix. Like, what are you making most of? So is that like a lot of main thing or are you, what other, what other products are, and services are you doing? So the, the Etsy sales, as far as those shelves of bar shelves, um, I've got a few versions now. I've got uh, just the turnbuckle brackets. I've got a little bit more of a modern square designed bracket. Those are both stationary bar tops. Um, then uh, this past fall, I came out with a folding version. So it only sticks four inches out of the wall, but when you need it, uh, you can fold it out and you got a full 20 inch table. Uh, that one's really, really popping off this year. Uh, a lot of people, I've had requests for it for three years now, and finally I made the design and, and we're selling it. So that's another one. Uh, that's kind of the bread and butter. But uh, then we have the, uh, the, the, the core of the business is taking logs from your lot that you want to save. You don't want the arborist to chip it up. I come pick it up. We cut it into lumber and then we turn it into furniture. And that's what um, kind of the, the bigger projects are. I can spend uh, a little bit more time, be a little bit more artistic with the base. You know, I do a metal base for the table. Um, right now I've got this uh, uh, Austrian pine, which, you know, it's, it's not super crazy because it's just a pine tree, but it's really old growth. It's uh, about uh, two, 150, about 150 years old. And um, we got a handful of uh, people that want it. So it's a historical tree and we're preserving it, you know, saving it from the chipper. Are you, what are you doing to dry? So that was uh, last year's last, last spring, I finished my kill. So I air dry for mm, 
six to eight weeks uh, typically. And then, uh, you know, once, once we get that moisture content down a little bit, uh, then we uh, put it in the kill. And that has been so invaluable. You know, I have often have? thought- What kind of kiln do you have? So I built the uh, kill from University of Virginia's plant. Okay. So it's just a solar kill. Um, it's about, uh, about 15 by eight foot, uh, on the inside, but you know, it's got the slanted roof. So it really cuts down on that inside space. Um, but it's, it's been amazing. I mean, I can, I can take wood from, you know, 20% moisture content down to eight, almost too fast. <laughs> wow. You know, like the past couple of days here, we've had other the, nature, uh, you know, Mother yeah, Nature. Yeah, exactly. You know, we've had these uh, these 97, 98 degree days, and uh, I'm hitting about 160 to 180 degrees in the kill. Wow. Yeah. So uh, not only, you know, and I didn't even really expect to get a heat treat out of it, but, uh, you know, I mean, at those temperatures, we're heat treating too. So the bugs yeah, yeah, are yeah. being taken care of. That's cool. So, yeah. Um, and how so you're not milling all the time right like you're are you like milling in batches or are you milling like a couple times a week like yeah it's typically in batches um when i can get to it you know i'm a just recently here i'm a, i'm a year into an employee so i'm uh, still getting used to uh having him be able to take care of some of the you know the the, the glue ups and the sandings and things like that and then now I'm, I'm getting more time to get into more of the milling and it, it's funny because the milling was uh you know like i told you it, it was sort of a strength building mm -hmm. operation for me for a while and it's kind of a hobby you know yeah. so it, it's funny because when i spend time on the milling now as a business uh i have to keep telling myself wait a minute this isn't play time this is a business because the whole <laughs> time i feel guilty that i'm just playing around with the chainsaws <laughs> That's cool. And, and you find that, uh, that the, that the chainsaw mill is good enough for your needs at the moment. Yeah. So I do have a bandsaw. I've got a, a woodlands mill, uh, bandsaw for a lot of more of the dimensional lumber, the smaller logs, things like that. Um, you know, that just gives you the speed, but the chainsaw lets me stay in the big capacity. And that's really yeah. when people are buying a big slab table, they want the big slab. So that's really why I don't think I would ever, you know, I know there's other options of a, the, the wide slab capabilities, but being able to just throw the saw up on a log anywhere, whether it's in my yard or maybe it's too big or something, you know, in a backyard, we can get it out of there super easy. Wow. Wow. That's yeah. so cool. So you literally built your wood business around a chainsaw mill. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. That's so cool. That's so cool. Um, what's been a challenge so far in your business? Um, and how many years have you been going at it full time? So full time, we're going on about four and a half. Congrats, man. That's yeah, so cool. Thank you. That's so yeah. cool. What's uh, been the biggest challenge? Yeah. Biggest biggest challenge is wearing all the hats, uh, getting mm -hmm. used to that. Um, you know, as things have gotten more serious, I've had to put on more of a, a serious financial hat and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like business formation and all of that. Um, also the, the web, you know, I, I know enough to get in trouble and uh, right now it's just a landing page and it is not working the way I really need it to work. So that's been my biggest struggle is just focus down the attention and spend the, you know, solid week or whatever to just plug out something that's a little bit more beneficial because when it comes to the, the contracts, like, you know, I'm an ambassador for Gramberg and I don't really tell people enough. I mm -hmm. really could be promoting that more, but I don't really have a spot on my website to do so yet. So that's, that's yeah. been the biggest challenge. That's cool. Yeah. That, I mean, that's, that makes, that makes perfect sense. A lot of times like you're too busy, like working in your business that you forget to work on it and do the things yeah. that are, that are building. What's been the most satisfying for you in terms of doing your business, especially this particular model? Um, you know, it's showing people or uh, the most satisfying is seeing how many people really are as much of a tree lover as I am. Uh, you know, the most 
random people ever you know some people would say ah chip it get rid of it burn it whatever and then other people are just like me where they're like well that's a nice brand you could save that do you find that you need to educate people on it on like what to do with the tree or like people are pretty like oblivious to what could what you could do with the tree in your yard yeah no uh it's it's all education because uh i mean for example this pine tree i took down it is um it was ended up being i cut it into two 10 foot logs these logs are 37 inches across Mm -hmm. i didn't i don't know the estimation of board foot in the logs but i mean there's enough for a lot of tables. I mean, each log ended up being about seven or eight slabs. Oh my God. Three inches thick, you know? So um, I have a lot of wood and then people will come to me and say, well, do you think you could like make a bowl out of that? Or I'm like, <laughs> well, I don't know. We can make like 15 tables. We could make your entire hardwood flooring, you know? Yeah. Uh, so yeah. yeah, people showing people how much wood is actually in a trunk of a tree is uh eye-opening for a lot of people yeah do you uh do you have any plans to diversify your product lines or are you just kind of pretty set on tables and and um well so some of the custom stuff for the most part you know i figure i'm i'm an artist you know so right now the discipline seems to be heavily into the furniture um Mm -hmm. I want to get more into the sculptural work, uh, commission work like that. But, you know, that's Mm -hmm. down the road. It's not super important right this minute. Um, But, yeah, you know, I mean, as far as diversification, I'm willing to get into whatever my current production flow can handle. You know, that's the thing people tell me all the time. They're like, oh, you're on Etsy. And they see something I made just for fun. And they're like, wow, you could sell that on Etsy. Like, yeah, you could sell that on Etsy if you dedicate a whole line to that specific product and then your packaging. That's that's literally what I tell people all the time is that, um, that you, just because you have a good idea, that doesn't mean that you need to do it. Yeah. 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 Um, cause it takes a lot, like you got to reorient. Like this, your- I mean, for example, to release the, this folding bar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. This, this, this folding bar I've got, um, you know, I've spent three and a half years shipping bars out across the country and with no problems, I figured the packaging and all of that, man, the first three bars I sent out of this folding, it's just a little bit bigger packaging. It's a little bit more fragile and we weren't packing enough bubbles into it. And each one was just coming back with next issue, next issue, next issue. And FedEx, each one would say, oh, well, it wasn't packaged correctly, so we can't cover. Mm. So, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a learning curve of, and financial curve to do a new product, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so along that lines is like, what, what does the future hold for you? Where would you like to be this time next year? Um, well, I want to still be making furniture, um, hopefully even more. Um, but I also want to get into a little bit more of the, uh, the education side of things, you know, um, I go out to maker camp every year in the fall and I show people, I actually let people get their hands on the Grand Burke mill and my, uh, you know, an 881, you know, chainsaw. And, uh, that really lets people see what I'm actually doing. Uh, when they pull the saw through a log themselves, they can see that it's, it's not just some, you know, uh, downtime. It's not relaxing time. It, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And uh, being able to show people that, you know, there's uh, a, a lot of tables that look really beautiful, but it took a lot of work to get there a lot of work yeah yeah Yeah. um so this is the part of the show where i give you any marketing or business advice is there any um marketing challenge or business question that you have that you'd like for me to help you think through well uh recently i've been trying to figure out how i increase the visits to my listings 
Uh, the main thing is, and I, and I think the answer is just get them listed on my own website. Um, I was avoiding that for a while because Etsy was bringing all the traffic to me, you know, and so I, I couldn't have competed with the amount of traffic that they were bringing. It's getting to the point now where I'm starting to get more and more hits on my own website. And I think people are confident enough that, uh, you know, if displayed correctly on my site, that they would just order straight from me versus having a middleman of Etsy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I like that question a lot. Um, because I think part of it too, is like, if you, do you know how Google, no, um, Amazon blew up so much because of Google AdWords and Facebook, right? So Amazon blew up on the back of other advertising platforms. So mm -hmm. the idea that I'm thinking is you have 654 sales on Etsy. Take your most popular uh, things that you sell on Etsy and help diversify the traffic source and put just a little bit of money behind those uh, and list them on Facebook, <laughs> right? Okay. So like, like cross-reference, like, and then you have all these reviews, you can market your reviews and take the screenshots of the reviews and market those on Facebook as well, right? Yeah, that's, um, that's a good idea, yeah. And then the next thing that I would do is, um, I would definitely build your own website yeah. and, uh, I would leverage the, 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 there's all these like plugins or what have you that you can port your reviews from Etsy and put them onto your website. Um, and as, as social proof, and then you take those listings and you, and again, once, cause the idea is that what you want to do is start building up your own page. So, yeah. You can uh, use your Etsy to build up your own Facebook page. And then, because I don't think Etsy gives you, because they want you on that platform, it's not like they're giving you the tools to build your own independent platform. So then yeah. you move from Etsy and continue doing Etsy. And then you start moving it to Facebook. And once you get through Facebook, then you could start. Uh, doing your own website. So then you start promoting your own websites, right? Uh -huh. And so from there, then you can start going direct to consumer. But like, really, it's kind of a, you could do a phase approach because, you know, you're busy, you got a lot of stuff going on. No. What I would first start doing is take your best selling items and then literally just start marketing them and drive, you can drive traffic directly to the Etsy page, right? Uh -huh. That's the first thing. And then you can duplicate that ad and then have it go directly to your website on Facebook. So you're liver, nice. literally taking the same ad, same photo, same everything. Um, because by the way, this is what Etsy is doing. Etsy is taking your ads and they are, uh, they're buying uh, not just Facebook ads, but they're buying uh YouTube ad and not YouTube ads, uh, Google ad, AdWords. Yeah. Why don't I just advertise on my own Google account, you know, my own AdWords account. And then you know, I thought, well, you know, I'm already spending, if I already sell something through their platform, I'm already paying for that. So, you know, I'm thinking more and more money going out the door, but uh, no, I think that that's not a bad idea to just at least see uh, what kind of results come back as far as the numbers. It's arbitrage. You know that, right? So so Etsy is advertising your, so like you're paying $20. Yeah. And they're paying five or $6. Yeah. No, it's plus ridiculous. there's all those other fees, <laughs> right? But they, yeah. they built their business off of Google. Yeah. So you can now do the same thing. You can like, literally you can compete against your own ad and, uh -huh. and potentially get it for cheaper. You know what I mean? And so, so do you think it'd be more beneficial to try that route than, uh, than just, just going full force into, uh, a, a, you know, listings on my website and try to don't, promote that. Don't, 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 don't bite the hand that feeds you. You got to do it uh -huh. in a, in you a know, very, yeah. very strategic way, but it's like, it's, it, it could be a little bit of a test. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you test, continue running ads 
and then you run your own ads uh, by Facebook, and then you start uh, doing your own ads directly to your website, right? So like yeah. you could, the first step would probably be to like um, increase the amount of traffic that goes to your Etsy page because your Etsy has a lot of social proof. And then you'll like, you know, and then you literally can start running ads like sold over 300 of these items, right? Mm -hmm. And of these tables, and then you just start directing them to your own website and that's it. Like, yeah. I mean, it ship is shipping flat, right? It's a flat fee for shipping. Yeah. It's, well, it's, it's free. Yeah. Yeah. It's free shipping. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, really, um, that's, that's kind of, that's amazing. That's amazing. Like you could start, I would say in like three to six months, you can start doing that, um, you know, selling on your own website. That would be nice. Yeah. It's like, yeah. but you got to leverage, leverage the social currency and the, the social, uh, social proof that you have on Etsy in order to do that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the thing is, you know, people go to Etsy and half the sale is everyone else's sale beforehand, <laughs> you know, the reviews and all of that. Absolutely. And you go to my website and it, it'll, it'll, it'll be blank. So yeah. 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 That's cool. Cool. Awesome. So how can people get in touch? What's your uh, website and your Instagram? So website is R-O-N-D-E-R-S, Ronders. That's my first and last name squeezed together into a phonetic, phonetic spelling. Uh, Ronders.com is the mm -hmm. website. And Insta is same thing, spelled out Ronders, D-O-T-C-O-M, all spelled out. Cool. Ronders.com. Well, Ron, thank you so much for taking the time to share your story. I'm so excited to get more chainsaw sawyers <laughs> on yeah. the uh on the call and and it's actually really cool to see that you've built a full-time business as uh with your alaskan mill as your backbone that's really inspiring yeah. that's going to be really inspiring to a lot of people yeah yeah no it's it's been invaluable and uh you know i mean yeah i'm, I'm an ambassador so of course i i'm gonna talk great about them but I, quite honestly if i never worked with another company uh, as far as uh, social media and all of that goes, I would be super happy because the Granberg family is just not only is their product amazing, the actual family is amazing. So it's it's really been a lot of fun to be involved with them. Awesome. Thanks so much, man. I'll talk to you soon. Yeah, thank you. We'll see you. Bye. Bye bye. Thanks so much for listening to the Woodpreneur Podcast, the number one podcast for the business and marketing side of the lumber, woodworking, hardwood flooring, and sawmill industry. If you like what you heard, please give us a five-star rating and review. You can also tap into our community by visiting woodpreneurlife.com. Once again, that's woodpreneurlife.com.